One thing that you do is, which is pretty interesting when it comes to questions, is I think very similar to uh, to Tim Ferriss is that you have a couple of almost go to questions which can really unlock like brilliant answers in in people. There's one that you use a lot to end your your podcast. So I think you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna say, but like, what's a challenge that you can leave the audience with? I was gonna mention it at the end of this episode, but you, you talk about questions there, so a great time if ever. But what what for the viewers listening now, what I guess what challenge would you leave them with? I would leave them with loving someone. Like if we spread love, that is really what we're doing. That's what I'm doing when I'm interviewing people at the highest form yeah. is I'm trying to love that person. I'm trying to really become one with that person in that moment so that we can get something out of it. And even if you don't interview people, it's like, how do you instill a little bit of love? I mean, I was interviewed on someone's podcast yesterday and they were just like, hey, at the end of it, they were like, hey, what's your address? I want to send you this quote book. And I was like so touched by that because in that moment, they were loving me. They were they were saying, you've impacted my life in a deep way and I want to appreciate you for that. And so I think my challenge to people is just love more. Yeah, I mean, when you have love in your heart, it's really hard not to feel envy or, or greed. You can't, they don't exist in the same world, you know? Um, I think one thing that you did really well when it comes to you know loving people is you gotta you gotta love yourself really at, at the end of the day. And I saw that you like to write down like I love myself as an affirmation and just do it over and over and over again because it's it's conditioning your mind to think in in the right way. I did that in in multiple different parts of my journey. I don't currently do it, but I feel very much like I do love myself. And the the parts of the journey where I've done it, it has been so transformational and served as a baseline. And a, a level set for it, it's really crazy because you you will drop you'll do something silly and then all of a sudden you'll the first thought in your head will be I love myself yeah it's like that changes your perception of reality in an incredible way if you're actually able to do that so I got that from the book Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends on It by Kamal Ravikant which I highly recommend Kamal has become a friend and he is someone who wrote a book that really changed my life. And I, I highly recommend it. So, yeah. Well, what I really like about doing that, Danny, is it, it puts you in a in a frame of mind where you're, you're almost like ignoring negativity. And I think you do something really well connected to this with, with X in that you filter words that you don't want to see. I've never heard of this before, but I've just started doing it. Like, why, why do you do that? Like, what, what words are you blocking and, and what impact does that have as a result? I mean... I would I would pull it up, but I, I kind of don't want to give credence to the words themselves, you know? I, I kind of don't want to speak the words that I don't want to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the the words that impact me are, are words that are political in nature or that I feel like are divisive or can can make make me feel upset. A lot of this comes down to like if you consume things that make you feel upset, you are going to feel upset. So that doesn't mean ignore the world. Like the world will still find its way to the most important issues. They'll find a way to you, even if you block all the words on Twitter. But it's just a subtle barrier I like to put in that allows me more peace. And a lot of people tell me I don't like Twitter. I don't like spending time on X. And I'm like, I understand that. And this is what I did when I felt that way. And people have been surprised. So that's a very cool tactic. And I'm happy you brought it up. And I, I highly recommend people check that out. And I'm going to tweet, I'm going to make a note to tweet out that list right now after this is over so that people can benefit from it. The only downside is that you won't be able to see your own tweets. <laughs> well, I'll do a screenshot so I won't actually include the words. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Another thing that you do that's really beneficial for setting up a positive frame of mind is you seem to be, like myself, really interested in meditation. Um, mm. Have you ever checked out Tara Brack smile meditation. I have not. I've heard of her name, but I've never checked it out. Really good. I'll, I'll send you a link afterwards. It's um, please one of the best meditations that that, that I do weekly. It's, it's changed my life. And then there's another one by by Mr. Tony Robbins. It's priming exercise, which is I don't know if you've heard of that one before. The morning one, right? Yeah, it's like three things. So good. The gratitude, and then you know three things to aim for, and sending out like you said love to to people, even your worst enemies because if if you can visualize them being happy it, it removes the um 
the, the hate. It's like Gandhi said that you can't, um, like, holding on to envy is like, it's like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. Like holding on to a a hot coal in yeah. your hand. Yeah. Just that That's what anger is. Yeah, just, just let go of it. It opens up an entire new experience of reality. Yeah. And, and that's why it's so important to focus on these things, I feel like. What, why, why meditation for you, aside from, um, I guess, clarity of mind, de-stressing, peace? Well, what does it bring you? The understanding that in every moment is perfect just the way it unfolds. The the peace of, of knowing that I'm on the right path. The Just the ability to run through the end of the day. Like What I've been doing recently is 20 minutes at night and... I've just been sitting in bed, uh, like with my back straight and just running through the moments or not even intentionally running through the moments, just seeing what comes up based on what happened that day. And it's so, it's so impactful. I go to sleep so well. And so why, why does it work? I don't know. I think it's like, we're so stimulated. And so if you remove the stimulation, you, you get to a new place. It just, it, it impacts my life in so many subtle ways that I can't speak about it enough. Like, for instance, I was just with a friend and we were looking at a bunch of car. We were on a balcony and we were looking at a bunch of cars driving by. And I said to him, dude, like all these people, they have their own story. They're living in their own world. And like, it's the most important thing. And every single car we see is a story, mm-hmm. is a life that someone is like fully invested in. And he's like, oh, wow, I've just never, never considered that. Yeah, And I hadn't considered that either, really, until meditating. So I think that that's kind of what it's given me. Well, what are you doing specifically? Are you visualizing like a gratitude list or are you doing a mantra or are you following along to a guided meditation? What, what are you doing? Just sitting there and seeing what comes up. There's no guidance. There's no, there's no direct intention. It's literally just for the sake of doing it, watching my mind or just spending time with my mind. 